Hello and welcome to the Knit Girls. This is episode 486. I can't believe we're still in the 480s. I feel like we're never going to get out of them. (laughs) I'm Laura, also known as Lala. I missed it, Leslie, and I did not. (laughs) I am Leslie, also known as You Don't Call Me Less on Ravelry and everywhere. Um, Today is Tuesday, May the 26th, 2020. It is. Um, we're recording late because we just forgot about it. Uh, Laura's been pumping out all kinds of stuff for the beginning of Stash Dash, and I've been playing Animal Crossing and reading because that is my life and it is amazing. I think that sounds um, pretty amazing. You're picking up stitches now, just so people know they don't think you're like, Yeah, no, sorry, I'm picking up stitches on a sock too, so that's why I'm looking down. Um, and on that topic, I have absolutely nothing in progress to show you. I haven't touched the sweater since last week. Um, I'm just working on sock tubes. These are uh, opal something that we got from Ginger Twist Studio. Ginger Twist in Edinburgh. Wait, was it? Yeah, it was Edinburgh. Uh-huh. Uh huh. This one is a, it's a parrot one. Um, yeah. One of their rainforest collection ones. It doesn't say rainforest on it anymore. Wait, it might. It's. Oh my god. It's this one. Yeah. Uh, and there's the colorway and. So nine seven seven zero. Whatever. It's got parrot on it. It's got oranges and yellows and shades of green and kind of a a light green, pale light sort of thing. Um, I cranked this on the... All of our crank tubes are on the Earl Becker Gearheart Speedster, the 72-stitch cylinder. Yep. And I will talk more about how I finish the tubes later in finished objects but i have nothing on the needles really to talk about besides these so it's all you you're you're putting them on the needles right now yeah i am these are going to be for kobe so that's where i was i was going to ask if those were going to be kobe socks because he keeps stealing your socks but your feet are much smaller than kobe's feet he was wearing my yarn piggy shirt today that amy got me (laughs) i was like that does not belong to you It just went up in his laundry, and he's like, mm-hmm. now it does? <laughs> he thought it was hilarious, so. Whatever uh, anyway. keeps you entertained, kiddo. Yeah. We're on, like, day 75 of quarantine. <laughs> Whatever floats your boat. I'm shocked he hasn't gotten into Animal Crossing. He probably would if I didn't have the, the Switch all the time. <laughs> I was actually thinking I need to just buy him one, too. Yeah, that'd be nice. Um, what am I knitting on? That's a good question. I am currently knitting on a baby hat that really has no pattern. I just cast on 48 stitches and did some ribbing. And now I'm going to go up till it's like, um, I feel like my lighting's very dark. It's going to rain here. Let's see if I can get some side light. <laughs> now I've got a spotlight on me. Woo! Um. I don't know if that's better or worse. What do you think, friend? I think it's worse. Okay. Um, So it's leftover um, Cormo, just a smidge at the for the ribbing, and then some hand spun, some Hello Yarn patchwork kit that's left over. So it's like um, a yellow, some purples, some pinks. So it will be a wee little baby hat. I'll work like five inches and then do crown decreases over eight stitches. Uh, So, yeah. Are these leftovers from your slip stitch cowls? Yeah. It is. I have a slip stitch cowl to show you, maybe. Did I bring it? Did I already put it up? I don't know. I have a second one. It might still be. I might have to get up and go get it. I'm very ill-prepared for podcasting today, apparently. Um, I'm also working on some 
socks that are also that were cranked and um on a 72 stitch cylinder and I picked up for the ribbing and I'm working the ribbon up ribbing up I have the first one done so this is the first one this is spring is sprung by Vesper yarns I actually ran out of yarn on this bind off and like those yellow stitches had to be bound off regularly instead Not of stretchy. super stretchy yeah. yeah but and I had that much left I was playing total yarn chicken um so yeah the first one's done the second one is in progress so that is good and I think that's all I have the um socks on a plane haven't really been touched this week I think I did one round Ursa Minor haven't taken out of the bag so um I've just been doing a lot of spinning and baby knit hats um, but I am going to go get that cow roll fast while you talk about what you finished. That's it? That's all you've been... Yeah, that's all I have on the needles. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Hold on, uh, I'll be back. You okay. start, you keep talking. Because she doesn't care what I say, so well, it doesn't matter if she listens. I don't care because she's not going to pay attention to anything that I say anyway. But she'll ask me about it later, and I'll be like, yeah, I talked about this on the podcast. And she'll be like, no, you didn't. <sighs> That's what friends do, right? I do the same thing, so I really can't talk crap about it. Um, so, oh, she's back. I would have been much faster had Pearl not, like, gotten up and blocked the doorway <laughs> to keep me from moving. Just gotta know what's going on. So I put heels and toes in sock tubes, um, as is becoming my standard. Um, I tend to, when I crank, I usually just crank like 85% of the yarn and then leave about 15%. So, because I'll take the hem or I'll, I'll take the first part of the tube and then I'll fold it over to make a folded hem, like sort of like the burr of a hat. And then I'll put in a true afterthought heel. And depending on how much yarn I have, I'll either rip back and re-knit the heel or I'll knit on, you know, to the end of it. Um, so this is one pair. This is from Fish Knits uh, in her Strong Heart base or Strong Sock base, one of the two. And uh, this is the Sidekick colorway. So I think Laura cranked the tubes for these i did but i put the heels and toes in um this is another one that i think laura cranked the tubes for oh uh, wow look at all the finished socks you have so these are this is silver linings playbook from desert vista dye works um these are my cookie a sock uh, blockers with little legs yeah, the other ones were from Knitting Left, the ones with the unicorns. Yeah, Laura got me these. Um, so, uh, um, yeah, so Afterthought Heels, same thing, folded cuffs and toes. And then the last is a yarn that we got. I can't remember if we got this at Ginger Twist or no. at the Wool Haven. Wool Haven. Um, and this was in... Glasgow, I think. Nope. Edinburgh. Edinburgh? Mm-hmm. It was the day we went to the bookstore. Yeah, because Glasgow was um, Seely McWheely. Yes. Well, it was a little outside of Glasgow, I think. But anyway, um, so this, I just really like the label. That's the reason I got this yarn. But it's uh, Retrosaria Mondim. So I've got a picture of lady with some fancy socks. Uh, Mondim is the town where there used to be a lot of cottage industries having to do with um, wool and sheep. And uh, this is 100% Portuguese wool. There's, it's non-superwash and there's no nylon in it. Um, and this is what it looks like in the skein. So cool. it comes like opal in the, like a center pole skein. Yeah. And this I cranked on the machine, and they're actually, they're a little narrower, um, a little denser than other bases. 
so these are going to go to Mama Lunderman because she has narrower feet uh, than either myself or Laura. Um, and so this is this is how they came out. I like it. They, they I like flash it a lot. In pool, they it, feel it's really very, nice. Very like Van Gogh colors in my mind. Yeah, sort of. Uh, yeah, a muted sort of variegated effect. You finished three pairs of socks. That's crazy. Yeah, but in the end, it's only like maybe 200 yards because heels and toes and then I'd fold over the hem so I'm not even knitting them it takes that's, forever though I was gonna say that's like 10 hours worth of knitting per pair of socks at least so, well I don't know about 10 but that's how long it takes me to do heels and um, toes and cuffs I'm knitting I'm, my cuffs but you're still doing all that folded over work yeah um I really like the these. Takes time I too. wish that I hadn't um, cranked these. I kind of wish that I had knit them so I could do it, do them wider and wear them. But I think I'll just next time we do an overseas order or actually Tolt. Um, there are several people in the U.S. who carry this wool as well. Oh, cool. Um, but I'm really making an effort not to buy yarn right now. So these will go to Mama Lineman. They'll either be Christmas or birthday or something. You're trying to get your stash under control is why you're trying to I not buy I really, arm. really am. Um, it is a little obscene at this point. So, uh, yeah. So I finished half a dozen socks this week. Six total. Wow. Granted, the tubes were cranked already. So I did not knit the body of the socks. I just did the... Heels, toes, and cuffs of three pair. So, still a lot. A little bit sick of socks, but I also am not motivated enough to knit anything else. So, what else do you have on the needles? Your sweater? A sweater, but I. Skating party. Anything else? Wow. Because I finished Nuala. Yeah. Um, I mean, I have a couple other things that are on the needles, but they're like, I haven't touched them in a while. So, nothing else that I'm actively working on. I should pick out a couple. Well, I've got, like, the that lace weight um, stole that I was working on when we were in Scotland. I should yeah. work on that some. So, I would like, I, I'm looking forward to the finished object of that. But I just haven't been in, I haven't picked anything. That's d- analysis paralysis is my problem. Gotcha. But not you. You have lots of good stuff to show. Well, I'm having kind of like an opposite thing where I want to cast on all the things, but I'm making myself try to finish stuff before I cast on. But I'm also trying to use up a lot of, um, I was going through my stash and I have a lot of like half skeins of things and a lot of like bits and bobs that are left over, especially of hand spun. So I'm still on, um, that kind of kick but i did finish this is what i went and got my over my second overtone cowl and i'm gonna keep this one this is the cast on edge this is the bind off this is a pattern by tin can knits it comes in four sizes this is the small adult size and um i was able to get two of these out of a single ball of the natural color and a single ball of um hand spun and it's a perfect pattern for hand spun it really works well um because it is garter stitch in the round um but the colors are also changing uh it makes it really easy to hide any inconsistencies they kind of just get hidden in Um, you would you would pair a crazy hand spun with a solid yeah neutral yeah for sure um especially gradients I think work really really well with this pattern so this is the first thing that I finished um and then actually just finished it the other day so this is the first one and then the second one so now I have two and um I also did three baby hats so I finished another we um woolly toppers elven hat and this was out of some worsted weight alpaca someone had gifted me at SSK one year. I think last year, actually. And I still have the rest of the skein left. I'm going to knit some other baby hats. 
But I felt like after I knit this, um, I knit it on size seven needles, which is what I knit the other ones on, and it seems a little bit loose. So I'm gonna do another pattern on smaller needles um, for the other ones. And this is the zero, like this is the newborn size. So, but it would be looser because of the drape of alpaca versus wool, right? No, it's like loose I'll... because this is a skinnier yarn. Oh, okay. I mean, drape has stuff to do with it, but not on the density of this gauge. It's just, like, I feel like you can see through it. So if it's a, a different weight yarn, what made you decide not to switch needle sizes? Well, it said worsted weight. But, you know, not all worsted weight is the same thickness. Okay. So... It's more up towards the DK weight end of the spectrum versus um, like a Rios end of the spectrum. Um, but yeah, so that's done. Just that little one. So I'll go down to like size fives or fours to knit the next thing that I knit out of that. Um, and then I have a berry... Um, what is the name of this pattern? Berry Baby Hat. Out of some hand spun and some old cashmere blend, like a Debbie Bliss cashmere chunky, but it was like the Joanne's version of that mm -hmm. back in the day. I think this is from, it probably entered my stash. It entered my stash before I moved to Mississippi. So I'm thinking 2003. And that's that light green at the top. And then the bottom is um, some fiber from two guys that I had spun up. And this was a chunky weight. And the pattern calls for a worsted weight. So I went up a single needle size. I knit this on nines instead of eights. And I um, cast on eight fewer stitches. So instead of being 56, it's 48. But it's still large. It's like a one-year-old size. Compared to the newborn size, it looks huge. So it's more of like a toddler size hat. I hear that when you put them side by side, they look like a bra. That was two different baby hats, but yeah. It's funny that you know that since you're not on Instagram. Well, because you talked about it in the next group, group. chat, yeah. And then um, this is just another Scraps Baby hat. It's kind of what I'm knitting right now where the brim is a, a one by one rib out of some leftover scrap yarn. I think that's Madeline Tosh leftovers from a baby vertebrae. And then the top part is some leftover hand spun from another hat that I had knit. And that was the hip strings 12 days been along their advent mm. spin along yeah. one of the yarns that I spun out of that so that used up both of those completely um, so yeah I'm moving some stuff out of the stash for sure and that is all I have that's finished so how many meters did you finish this week um I would say each of the baby hats is around the two larger ones, I would say, are like 50, and the small ones around 30. So, like, 130, and then, like, I don't know, uh, 200 for the cowl, maybe. Maybe a little less. So, and like... You, you have spinning, too, right? I do. So, probably 300 in knitting. And then I just finished this today. Um, this is my Knit Spin Farm Bats in the Suspicion set. And um, it was around three ounces, and it is 170 yards of a finished two-ply. They were just spun end-to-end. -end. So, like, the purple kind of matches up. There's a point where it doesn't. Then the yellow matches up. Then the green matches up. And cool. uh, it's 170 yards. So it's basically a gradient. And that would be 466 meters for stash dash, somewhere around like 700 meters for stash dash, maybe. Um, I do have two other singles that I finished spinning. 
I finished spinning some Into the Worlds, and the this is their BFL base. This was the club for April, and this is the the name of it was Spring Spring Sprung, and I spun these fractally. So on the ladybug, these will be up for applying soon, and then um, I also spun some Homestead Hobbyist that I got in. Um, Madrona, not this past January, but the January before when it was Madrona and not Red Alder. And this is, um, a colorway that he based off of Merman Christian's Chesapeake tail. And so it's a really, really interesting blend. He does these savage blends and this is 37.5% mulberry silk. So lots of silk, 33.75% merino. 12.5% Shetland, then it's like 12.5% uh, sea cell, so lots of slippy fibers as well, and 3.75% sparkly gold Selena. So it's got a lot of shimmer to it, plus that gold. And I just divided it in half and spun it end to end. So uh, around eight ounces still to apply but three ounces done. And then I have um, a bat that I'm spinning on the ladybug currently that I got at Fiber in the Burrow. I grabbed all my fiber from Fiber in the Burrow and uh, the Leading Men Fiber Arts Kate Retreat, and I pulled that, uh, which is around a pound, maybe a little bit more, to spin up next. I got four ounces at Kate and I got six plus 12, uh, 18 ounces at Fiber in the Burrow. So why specifically did you pull those? Um, Cause they were all sitting together and easy access, but I hadn't put them like away in plastic or anything yet. Mm -hmm. They were just sitting in a bag. So the bag that I got at Fiber in the Borough. <laughs> so they, I think, are going to be next up. They were sitting in my guest room, and I'm trying to get Fiber out of the guest room. So one day when this pandemic is over, I have a place for guests again. Instead of a bed that's currently covered in fiber. This whole room is covered in fiber, so I have no room to talk. <laughs> I mean, I'm in my studio, too, which has lots of stuff in it, but I did finish, like, three full skeins this week, so I'm feeling okay about that, and used up a lot of bits and bobs. Once I finish this hat, I'll be three full skeins. That's cool. So that's it for me for spinning and finished objects. Have you been reading at all? Uh, not as much as I would like. I spent a lot of time on Animal. Moving my show notes so I can read stuff. So I'm still reading Eridon by Tobe Falls Ford, which is the third in that series. Um, and I started The Sin and Lightning, which is the fifth book in the series by K.F. Breen. I think it starts with Sin and Chocolate, although I don't know why it's called Sin and Chocolate. There's nothing about chocolate in the book whatsoever. Um, <laughs> there's not. No, I can't remember. Like, does she like chocolate? Like, I remember her. She doesn't being... mention it at all in the book, so I don't know. But I like KF Green. Um, the, that series is a sort of paranormal um, fantasy. It's got demigods, um, so it's got like a magical world that coexists with the Chester or non-magical world. Um, and so I'm reading that one now. I reread the fourth one so I wouldn't forget what was going on. I'm reading the fifth one and the sixth one comes out in a couple weeks. 
Uh, I'm still listening. Can you hear my dog? Scratching? Yeah, she's got that stupid ball you gave her. Oh, well, she likes it. I give the best (laughs) presents. You do. She loves it. I'm shocked Um, she hasn't gotten it stuck somewhere. Yeah. I'm surprised she hasn't just torn it to pieces. Trying to get to the tree. She hits it. Yeah. So Pearl, uh, Leslie got Pearl a toy that is basically like a hamster ball with a tube that runs through it. And you put treats in it. And if you hit it repeatedly the right way, the treats will come out. Yeah, it's just, it's, I'll put a, I'll put a link in the show notes. I got it from Chewy and I think it was like $9. And Pearl loves it. Like if she gets these little, like, I don't know, nickel sized treats and um so it's a ball it's got little reservoirs on either end and then a little tube that connects the reservoirs and the tube's got these sort of angled cutouts so if the treat when you roll the ball the treats go from one reservoir to the other like they roll and if they happen to hit the tube cut out at the right angle they'll come out it's just luck um but it, the idea was to keep dogs entertained like it's a a busy toy it's a puzzle uh-huh. yeah and um pearl generally likes that sort of stuff so she loves those kinds of toys so she um she can't muscle her way into getting the treats out of this one like she can some of her other toys she has to actually <laughs> roll it around until the treats fall out um and when she gets it stuck somewhere she comes to me and starts <laughs> whining <laughs> Yeah, I I tried it on my dogs, but I knew before I ordered it they wouldn't care about it. If it doesn't squeak, Neelix doesn't care, and Buffy doesn't understand how to play with toys. So, um, anyway, so I'm still listening to the White Tower. That one's a sort of fantasy coming of age one, and uh, I listened to Stephen Fry's Victorian Secrets, which is just about the Victorian age, and. Uh, you know everything from uh homosexuality in victorian times to like how people kept secrets and how the aristocracy worked and just all sorts of of crazy information historical tidbits yeah uh which started me on a new book that i just started listening to i can't remember the name of so i'll put it in next week but um I like Stephen Fry. This is the first book I've listened to that he's narrated. Oh, I like uh, him. So, yeah, I, I've listened. He's narrated shows that I've watched before, but like, not an audio book. So I like it. So that's what, um, yeah, that's what I've been listening to. What about you? I've been watching Pearl roll her ball around and also watching Death in Paradise which is a mystery series that was on the BBC and um you can get on Britbox in the US I'm on the third season and each season's around eight episodes long so I'm like over halfway through the third season it took me a little bit to get into the third season because a major character is killed off and um I had been spoiled and knew that that was coming so I was dragging my feet a little bit to start the third season, but I did. And um, still re-listening to Lightning Struck Heart. And then um, Alana Andrews, I know you hate this, but I kind of love it. Um, she is publishing a new book, and it is not Innkeeper, but it is published like she does the Innkeeper. Mm-hmm. So it is Julie returning to atlanta oh kate's daughter or whatever war mm-hmm. okay as like a 30 year old maybe a little younger than that and it's being and she has to solve a mystery and it's being released as um it's like a full sequence novel mm-hmm. so um it's being released like a chapter at a time um and I am greatly enjoying that. And I'm enjoying going back to that Kate Daniels world. It's kind of like a familiar world. Yeah. And um, uh, what is his name? Anastasio or whatever is now the uh, Buddha Beta. Uh, he was a kid 
and the Kate Daniel. Oh, he's the one that married um, Kate's best friend? No. Oh, no, you're talking no. about the spoiled one. Yes, the who's boy. Who's beautiful and spoiled and, yeah. yeah okay. I forget um, his name, but I know who you're talking about. Yeah, so I'm really, really enjoying that. I get, I subscribe to her blog as like an email feed. So it just comes into my email and I read it and enjoy it. And it's a great way. They're releasing like one chapter a week. Yeah, I can't. Do, I mean, I'm I'm glad that's a cool way to do it, but I, I can't. Well, it, it provides accessibility for people who can't afford. It to does. Work. And like I said, that's great. But I don't have the patience for that. So <laughs> going back to you mentioned that you'd been putting off watching the third season of whatever that show was because you knew a character died. Mm-hmm. So are you going to listen to the rest of the Verania series after the lightning struck heart? I haven't decided yet. Because why haven't you? Because you told me a character dies and you're yes. mean. <laughs> it's why it's also why I never read the Divergent series past the first book. Because someone told me who died in it. Oh, I and, vaguely remember that series, but Yeah. Once it gets spoiled, it's really hard for me to But I didn't tell you who died. It doesn't matter. I had to gear myself up to it. You've been gearing yourself up to this for two years? It doesn't matter. <laughs> I haven't read the last Kate Daniels book either. Oh, well, that's just sad. You should. I know. I'm going to go back, I think. I was re-listening to them to gear yeah. up and um, read the last one. And then I got to the one where all the kids are dying. from. Oh, the, yeah, because um, of the that thing that takes over shifters. Yeah. Yeah, um, it's kind of like a shifter plague, kind of, like, their children don't survive, like, a certain percentage of their kids go feral, and they don't survive, but there is a cure, but they have to go to, um, somewhere overseas, Europe, and then a major character dies. Yes. (laughs) And again, I had, (laughs) I can't gear myself up, even though I know that's happening, because I've read that one. Yeah. Um, I might just skip that one and go on to the because I have them all on audio. Yeah. Um, I need to go back and uh, I'm also stuck on the second to last Patricia Briggs because I was re-listening to those and a major character dies. I feel like a therapist would have their work cut out with you <laughs> for why um, you won't read books that you know have painful things in them. I'm surprised that you read like the um wolf song series the green creek series from Uh tj clune because people die in that one all the time and it hurts like it yeah hurts all up in the feels Mm -hmm. but someone didn't spoil me on those (laughs) (laughs) and i haven't reread like i've reread parts of the wolf creek but i haven't reread the parts where people die i can't skip around like that Mm mm-hmm I bu- I use my bookmark feature on my Kindle quite extensively. But yeah. It is what it is. I'm also in the mindset right now. I don't know. I like my reading to be light and fluffy a lot. And of that's time. fine. It, I like it varies for me. Sometimes that's really all I want for months on end, but right now the the book I'm listening to I'm going to have to pull it up cuz I can't remember what it's called. Um, is more of a okay so it's more of like historical information with some opinions in there so it's called too much how victorian constraints still bind women today this is the picture grabbed me. <laughs> i was like yeah I, I can totally uh uh feel what that girl's feeling so um it's just how to describe it. It's just, it's all about Victorian culture. And by the way, I just realized because I had no exposure to British things when I was in school, I just realized that like the terminology relating to the times, like Victorian and Edwardian and Elizabethan, referred to uh, the monarchs. Yeah. No idea. Um. First yeah. time I realized that. 
it so, just tells you um, how, the emphasis that was put on that culture. Right. But I, I didn't realize it coincided, generally speaking, with the time of those monarchs yeah. that it referenced. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so uh, specifically when people talk about, like, furniture and stuff. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, it's a very... Uh, a very narrow viewpoint anyway I read a lot of sad books for work so because a lot of the Newberries and some other things are very sad like Orbiting Jupiter which is a middle grade book will just rip your heart out and there was a period in time where I read like 15 either cancer or like medical yeah uh, like YA in middle grade in a row. So I like my adult stuff to be a little bit more light and fluffy. But that's just me. Um, Patreon. We have our monthly VKN. Yeah. On May 31st, it's going to be at 6 p.m. Central. Yep. And we are going to do a fail along, but we keep ordering stuff. And yeah, we're shipping failing keeps... at the fail along. <laughs> so we've got two different um, projects that we were trying to get scheduled for this month. We had three. Yeah. Remember, we had ordered one, and then the shipping was going to be two months or yeah. whatever. So the two that we settled on, um, one of them is making a rag wreath rug thing and then the other is making this like floating gem jewelry and so both of them were ordered like a week plus ago and neither one of them have come yet only one of the two of them has shipped yet but I got a notice at the same time that said hey we shipped it but we've been hearing yeah. that orders are taking longer to get to people because of you know the influence of um covid and and how that's affecting everything so uh we are failing at our fail along this month we will hold <laughs> two in june we'll schedule the first one as soon as either of those packages arrive yep um but we'll give you you know at least five days notice so you know ahead of time you know when we're going to do it uh and it'll be on a weekend because i i can't do weekdays but what else um there's animal crossing is on here animal crossing is always on there have you done anything fun in animal crossing this past week um i made a playground so that's fun. I finished off three paths. I'm trying to clone a bunch of flowers and they are not doing what I need them to do. Cloning or breeding? Well, breeding, okay. I guess. Like the um, different colors and stuff. Yeah. So I have some white mums that I'm trying to get purple or blue. I can't remember. And also some white. Cosmos, I think, that I'm trying to get the purple or blue. like daisies, yeah. Yeah, so. I don't know. I'm just, I've kind of reached a point where um, my house is paid off. Yeah. Um, this is in a game, not in real life. That would yeah. be amazing, but. Yeah. Um, I go and I see what people in my town are crafting, my villagers, and get new patterns from them. But I don't need a ton of bells. Yeah. And so, although my bells, my turnips are selling for 250 bells today. I, I checked forgot for to you. buy turnips this week. So. Um, so, I have to decide if I'm going to make some other areas. I've been a five star for a couple weeks now. I think a new event, oh, there was the stamp rally that happened in the museum, um, which was cute, but very short. And um, I think an event will change soon. I haven't been getting... Have you had Celeste come and do any star showers? Mm -mm. I haven't in like a month. Mm -mm. So... But I've been starting to save up my like high value fish and bugs for when the... 
Oh, my dude's there today. My bug Which, guy is there today. Okay. Well, cool. I'll have some bugs I need to sell. I'll <sighs> open later for you then. Perhaps. I could be very busy knitting on baby hats. There's always that chance. <laughs> um, what else? You are still doing your Instagram lives, right? I am. Gwen's going to come on tomorrow. I need to remind her. That's going to be awesome. I know. Amy of Ross Farms was on today, and that was super fun. Because oh, uh, cool. in her uh, inn, she owns like a historic inn in Washington, Pennsylvania. The third floor is the ballroom, and she turned it into her studio space. Wow. So I got a tour of that today, and I got to see a lot of her vintage wheels, and we t- discussed rare breeds and stuff like that. It was lots of fun. Cool. So Gwen will be on tomorrow, and then Lou of Old Rusted Share will be on Thursday, and then Amy on Friday, and then the following week, which is June 1st, um, Daedalus Wheels will be on the 1st. On the 2nd, it'll be Starnets, hmm, who makes cool. the bags. That'll be fun. I don't have anyone for Wednesday yet. We might just do, like, a sit and spin day or talk about spinning. And then Whimsy Stitches, we're going to kick off his Pride Month celebration oh, on the fourth. Great. Rick, and then the fifth will be Amy Florence again. And then I start. I need to start booking for the week of the eighth. So, yeah. You're very organized. Um, I'm not, but <laughs> we. Um, one of the things we did when we canceled SSK was give some of our vendors we allowed any vendor who wanted to sign up for time on the live because that just seems fair like they are all being drastically influenced by the shutdown of uh, all these shows yeah not just us yeah um so i kind of wanted to allow to get them to have a place to be able to talk and then if you as the viewers or if leslie has any ideas of things that you would like to see or talk about just let me know and I will add that to my list of things to do I think I'm going to continue through June and then I might stop in July we'll see where we're at I mean I'm already over 50 of them like I've been doing it for over 50 days I think I'm actually over 60 now um days of lives on the weekdays so I don't know that there's much more to say, <laughs> but yeah. Instagram changed their policies and now just saving them 24 hours, they save them for forever. So, um, if you friend me on Instagram, just tell me that you're a knitter and I'll approve you. Um, cause I'm set as private because I'm a teacher and, um, a teacher who likes to cuss. <laughs> and so, uh, I want to make sure that my kids aren't getting on there. Um, yeah, and you can see the last couple. I have saved on there, like, binding off a toe-up sock, casting on the toe of a sock, um, putting in an afterthought heel, my one with Amy, um, from today, Ross Farms. So there's, I think, four or five that have saved since the, when they decided to start moving them to Instagram TV. And they save in the grid. Like, you can access them through the grid, or you can go on, if you follow me on Instagram TV, and search for Lala Knits. But, yeah. Besides that, uh, Stash Dash is going on. It's going strong. It started on Friday. It's never too late to join us in Stash Dash. And you don't have to set a super high goal. There is... um, a bunch of different levels, including one that's set your own goal under 1K or up to 1K. So yeah. everyone is welcome. And it goes on through the end of August. So don't be hurting yourself trying to knit or craft. You know, go at your own pace. Be safe. Be healthy. I feel like you should listen to your own advice. I haven't been knitting or crafting a whole lot at all. I- I guess maybe retroactively, when you were doing the Harry Potter thing, Um, you would sometimes, like, break yourself to meet those goals. I'm not playing House Cup anymore. I know. So, 
No imaginary points for me. I'm on, I'm a student on sabbatical this term because with everything that's going on, I wanted to be a little bit more gentle with myself and not feel like I was letting a group of people down by not knitting eight hours a day while I was off. So I'm trying to my uh, modus operandi for life is to uh, set as few goals as possible. So I let down the fewest number of people. (laughs) I mean, just checking my email is an accomplishment. Sometimes checking my RAV messages is definitely an accomplishment. I always forget to get in there. And then I have guilt when I see like I haven't responded to someone in two weeks. In fact, I need to probably get on there today. But yeah, there's just a lot going on. I'm going up to work for a bit tomorrow to check in some books and do some work. So maybe I'll meet my new AP. I don't know if he'll be working or not. We'll find out. But yeah, I think that's it for me and my blathering of life. How's your animal? Weren't we talking about Animal Crossing? What have you been doing on Animal Crossing? Anything fun or interesting? Not really. Like you, I've got my house paid off. Um, I, you know, every day I look for my fossils. I harvest any fruit that's there. If it's my native fruit, which for me is apples, I just put it in my storage at home. I don't sell it on my own island because you get like a quarter of what you would get if you go to somebody else's island where that yeah. isn't their native fruit. You get 400 instead of 100. Um, I just did oh. that last night. I sold all my pears at Carrie's Island. Uh, I dig up any of my like flowers that have crossbred and move them in the hopes that they'll continue to crossbreed. Uh, what else? Are there any up... that you're missing that you really, really want? There's none that I, I mean, I don't really, really want anything. <laughs> um, I've got several already, but. I need uh, like the blue Cosmos for some recipe that I got. Yeah. So there's a couple. I'm trying to. Um, the recipes where there's one that I'm like, I'm, I'm missing a purple tulip i think for one of them and i'm missing one color of uh, mum as well for something you can always come over and pick if i have them um what else pick up shells and stuff because you know they'll gripe at you if you let your island get dirty (laughs) those residents they are very opinionated are you still a four star are you a five star now I'm a four star because what's that? She looks like a little puppy dog. Isabel. Isabel. Yeah. She's like, your residents say that you need to decorate your island more. And I'm like, I don't want to put crap on my island. I don't want to just spread out crap. Like you need a cotton candy machine. I have that. I have a popcorn machine. I have a dartboard. I have a, an arcade machine. I have a basketball court. I have, fountains and slides and lighthouses and hammocks and like there's stuff little areas everywhere have you put light posts because that's what did it for me is i added light posts along my paths at corners to light them up no i haven't even done paths in a lot of places yet so yeah just slowly working on that stuff I, i haven't seen my the art guy in like a month no i haven't either so you can look and see if he's come on the map. You don't actually have to run back to your hidden beach, by the way. Oh, well, part of my orchard is there, so I got oh, okay. Um, But that's good to know. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's all I got. Animal Crossing, for those of you that don't play, is probably not super exciting to hear about. <laughs> it's a Switch game. Yeah, for the Nintendo Switch, which is a uh, It tells game you how console. many hours that you've been playing. Yeah, it, which though. you probably shouldn't. It's better not to know. I just hit 200 and I was like, oh, I've been doing this a lot more frequently than I realized I was. I haven't looked. (laughs) But Super Paper Mario, like, origami something comes out in July. So I'm excited about that. Because I like the Super Paper Mario genre. Um, No blood and guts in that. (laughs) Um, But yeah, that's about it. I've got two mow my grass and pick up a grocery order tonight 
It's so, gonna rain, so you might wanna. I've been trying to get it done for several days, and something always comes up. So yeah. Um. So yeah, if you are a Patreon supporter, we thank you very much, and we will talk to you on Sunday, the thirty first of May, at around six p.m. for our BKN. Um. Or... Where my little baby at? Uh, our fail along, which will be sometime the next week. Very cute. I think it's almost done. I just need to do the uh, decreases. I would tell you, but I cleaned my desk off and now I can't find anything. Well, anyhow, I hope you guys have a lovely week and we will talk to you again next week. Bye, Bye y'all.